consumer confidence have to say? What about uh, Lance Lambert on Fox Business? How about a former Fed governor issuing a pretty stern warning? Adam Newman back with WeWork. We shall see. And finally, a question I got from Olivia yesterday that I thought you might want to hear about. So first, let's get into consumer confidence. We are a consumer-based economy. The consumer drives the economy. Are we getting scared? Are we getting conservative? We've heard from folks like Lululemon and others that appears to be cutting back. But what is going on with consumer confidence? Consumer confidence drives decisions. Are we getting scared? Are we getting nervous? What are we scared about? So first and foremost, consumer confidence dipped last month, or this, this month's reporting for last month, to 104.7. That should mean absolutely nothing to you. What we are looking for is the trend and the gap to expectations. That's what is important to you and I. Last month was 104.8, so a small dip. However, the consensus estimates by the experts was it would go significantly higher to 107. When you step back and look at the summary number and dig under the covers, there were two things that were interesting. One, the present situation, high stock markets, generally low unemployment. The present situation we are feeling really good about. Last was 147, right now was 151. So again, a big gap. We are feeling good right now. However, expectations six months out slipped to 73 from 76. So again, what this is telling me is a lot of us are getting nervous. Maybe you have heard about friends getting laid off. Maybe you have heard about whatever, but you're feeling okay today, but you are nervous about the future. Why is that important? Well, I think it was yesterday we talked about durable goods. Remember, durable goods are things we buy infrequently that last about three years. That would be something that we would pull back on. Also, I haven't seen yet, I think Carnival Cruise Line reports this morning, it might be after hours, it'll be interesting to see if we are pulling back not only on durable goods, but also experiences or vacations. Because again, remember, we saw during the pandemic a rush to buy stuff and then a pivot to buy experiences. So we got to figure out where we are in that cycle. But it is concerning, at least in my eyes, that we are getting less and less confident about the future. Something to watch. I don't know if you remember, but very, very far back, probably the beginning of this channel, we talked about a company called WeWork. WeWork ultimately went public and then ultimately went bust. It looks like their founder, Adam Newman, who cashed out, I think, with $2 billion. Talk about a golden parachute. He is looking to potentially buy the company back for $500 million. I got to tell you, that's a cool trick. You run it up, you cash out, and you buy it for pennies. Don't know if that will happen. Don't know if he's got the capital. Don't know if he's put it somewhere else. But that would be a very, very neat trick. Cash out for $2 billion, buy it back, run it up, sell it again. Kind of an interesting strategy. So I've been thinking a lot about the Fed meeting. You've heard me say, and I even wore the swing and a miss. I was honest. I told you I didn't. I thought the Fed made a mistake. I missed it. I've been thinking a lot about it. And these are three things that I'm thinking about. So let me know what you think. Why, why the Fed may have not been as aggressive as I thought. One, the Fed knows, knows with certainty that the job market is not as strong as the headline numbers talk about. Yes, Jerome Powell will parrot 3.9. He will talk about the JOLTS report, but he knows. He knows that that's just cover for what he sees as a weakening job market. Maybe. Number two, what if the Fed knows and knows with certainty that their calculation for CPI given owner's equivalent rent, AKA shelter, is so backwards looking and convoluted that it is useless in today's environment? Maybe, maybe. What if, what if, the Fed looks at the banking system and goes, it is barely holding together. Banks are executing extend and pretend. They're adding years. 
and they're not foreclosing. However, if we go higher, a la Silicon Valley Bank, uh, First Republic, it will cause banks to crumble. I think it's possible, it's possible that the Fed sees all three of those and goes, we just can't go higher. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, I think it was a mistake. I don't think they need to go higher, but I do think they needed the threat of going higher, and that was a mistake. Not to be outdone, I read an uh, article uh, quoting a former Fed governor. This, again, is a former Fed governor. His name is Kevin Warsh. Kevin Warsh. Kevin Warsh is pretty negative on the current Fed and the current stance. The, he is saying that the Fed is goosing the economy. The Fed, with their promise of three rate cuts, is already loosening financial conditions and prices are melting up. Shout out the Fed guy who came on this channel about nine months ago and said we are going to have a crash up. Uh, I think it is uh, fair to say that he was right. We need to get him back on the channel and talk about it because, again, I love that call. It was done early and he has been proven right. I think his handle is Fed guy. Who? Fed guy 12? I don't remember. Joseph Wang. Give Joseph Wang a follow. Let him know we, uh, we highlighted him, but he was right with the melt up. How about JP Morgan? JP Morgan's out saying, why the heck would the Fed cut? There's no reason for a Fed rate cut unless something breaks. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is certainly, again, I think looking more likely that we either have, as I said earlier, the Fed sees the whites of their eyes of a recession, right? Job market breaking the wrong way, inflation collapsing, or we're gonna have no cuts. I think it is increasingly becoming obvious that no cuts is an option if the, if the economy stays together. I don't know if you saw this, but when I did, all I could think about is inflation is a feature, not a bug. Folks, would it shock you? Seriously. Would it shock you if you knew that the U.S. dollar, what you and I hold in our pockets, has lost 25% of the purchasing power since 2020? I want you to think about that for a minute. Seriously. It's been less than four years. We've lost 25% of our purchasing power. So if you had $100,000 in the bank, it now buys $75,000. But remember, inflation is a feature and not a bug. So if you did the work and you did the things that we talk about on this channel and you bought assets, assets that cash flow, assets that have fixed rate 30-year debt, you should be smiling. You are doing okay. You are doing better than the average person. And if you happen to be in a position where you got one or two the last couple of years, you're doing quite well. So I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, when a friend of the channel is on public or on primetime TV, I like to shout him out. I saw a clip of Lance Lambert, our Thursday guest and uh, CEO of uh, Resi Club. He was on Fox Business, a little three or four minute segment talking about housing unaffordability. And he talked about the government being looking for scapegoats and, you know, all of those things. And shout out Lance for just being honest, like he always is. The only way to fix this, folks, is the boring way. You don't fix unaffordability with 5k tax credits and things of that nature. Yeah, inflation is a feature, not a bug. Absolutely. I love that idea. So again, uh, Lance Lambert talking about the only way to fix it is by building more homes, building more ADUs. Shout out that ADU guy, Derek, for doing what he does to try to get a million ADUs created. Love him for that. So again, the only way to fix this is to keep building more supply. I hope more and more public builders follow the Lennar model and really start building entry-level homes that are frankly smaller. That is my hope. Other things going on, I uh, want to talk about a question I got from Olivia yesterday, give you a little insight into our relationship and all of that. So 
As you know, we are actively recording what I hope um, is like a TV show, Buying Vegas. We've already recorded episode number one. It is currently being sliced and diced. We're going to be recording video number two this afternoon with the one and only Lisa Sutton talking about condo hotels. But last night at dinner, Olivia asked, are you excited to buy a rental property in Las Vegas? She goes, on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? And I thought about it and my answer surprised her. She had thought given all the work and energy and frankly money we are spending on this, that I would be an eight or a nine. And I told her, honey, I'm a one or a two. Now, how can that be? How can I be a one or a two with all this time, energy, focus, and yes, money being put out? The answer, folks, is quite simply, I am broken. We are in the part of the process where I don't know what I'm looking for yet. I don't know what asset. I don't know what area. It's just, we aren't to the point where we have a buy box yet. Once I have a buy box and I am looking daily and I can see learning, I will get more and more excited. We are very early. Vegas is a gigantic city with lots of opportunity, but we, we're still early. We, we're still meeting agents. We're still figuring out areas. We're still learning new ways to generate income and cash flow. So, so as of right now, I stand by my two, but that's because I know there's hard work ahead of me. I need to learn Vegas. I've only, you know, I've been here a hundred days. So again, I thought that was interesting. I am not, I try to be even keel. I don't try to come out hot because if you come out hot like a shooting star, you're going to burn out and not be able to hold that energy. But if you can keep a good pace, keep doing the work that's in front of you, uh, you will get to a point where you are excited. I thought that might be an interesting discussion. Last thing, I want to highlight a video that went out yesterday with Beth Traverso. Beth Traverso and I talked about a huge risk for new buyers. I see, I see potentially big pain in front of first time home buyers and new buyers that are not used to what's going on. Folks, buyers are going to have to sign a buyer's agency agreement. It may be called something different in your area, but basically buyers will have to sign something before they see a home. That is going to become the new standard. And I fear that new home buyers are not going to read it or understand it. So as you will see during that conversation with Beth, there is a way where a new home buyer may have signed three, four, five of these, finally buy a home, and then owe a bunch of money. Because in theory, if you sign a document that you don't know, it could give that agent the right to represent you for up to three to six months. And if you don't read it and you don't control it down to a single house or whatever, a single day, you could get got. You could end up owing multiple agents commission. So again, don't know if it will happen. It's all being worked on now in the wash. But be careful. Be very, very careful. If you are signing a legal contract for represent representation, that includes a clause that says you will be paid, the, the agent will be paid at closing, please understand what that document is and how it is controlled. Don't put yourself at risk of lawsuits or additional money or frankly, headaches that you don't need. Alrighty folks, that is the Daily Financial News. We've got 123 amazing people with us this morning. Thank you for getting up early if you're on the West Coast. Thank you for being a part of this. Across the world, 123 folks, only 12 thumbs up, so that's a less than 10%. Uh, hopefully, we can get those thumbs up going. Again, remember, folks, if you want to be a part of this amazing community, you want to do the work, you want to get a buy box, buy the course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time for $3.99, and I will throw in the Vegas event for you. And yes, all nighter hider, do the work, do the work. Very cool, folks. Have a great day. Take care. Later.